someone once asked me how much do you want it it was about something different uh and then and so it's it's really just that you have to ask yourself how much do i want it and if if you want it you will break everything to do it um relation it could be like relationships with parents uh could be dropping out of school you got to do what you got to do but one thing you uh, you have to always m- know is discipline that was saria suaro she is a painter visual artist a pastry chef and a prominent animal activist she's been in the scene for around 8 years now during which time she's built multiple businesses around her creative passions it was my pleasure to sit down with saria for the very first episode of the state of the creators podcast where we spoke about her journey her struggles the challenges she faces as a woman specifically in the creative industry in bangladesh and what to do as a creative when you want to pursue multiple different passions now before we get into the episode here's a quick word from our sponsor which is me <laughs> if you get any value out of this podcast there are a few ways through which you can support this show number 1 if you're on apple podcasts it would mean the world to me if you go there and leave a review and a rating Number 2 if you think a personal friend or a family member would find this episode valuable simply share the link with them and number 3 if you're on social media a share can go a long long way given your followers and connections are into that kind of stuff and finally if you want to know more about the upcoming episodes or simply want to follow my work go to www.tausifakas.com where you can sign up for my weekly newsletter i'll be sending out an email every week with some of the best creative content i find out there i consume a lot of content and i'm basically building a community where i can share this stuff with so that's www.tausifakas.com now i've taken a lot of time for this introduction so we'll get right into the episode this is the state of the creators episode 1 with tausif akkas featuring saria soaro hope you enjoy the show this is the state of the creators a show about creative individuals who are on a quest to build something out of nothing Okay. Yeah. The sound didn't get recorded. Yes. So um That's take, okay. Bloopers. It is it is take 2, but it did it was it was a good intro. Um I was talking about how nervous I was. Um and clearly you can see why <laughs> because uh this is the first time I'm doing this stuff, getting all the stuff sorted and then messing it up. So uh um, There's a question about failure and um if you ask me I'll probably say this was one of my biggest failures. Really? No. <laughs> That's it. This is it. <laughs> um okay, so uh again before anything else, tell me what your last name. Okay. And now I know how to pronounce it correctly. So. Okay, great. So my last name is pronounced Sawaro. Mm-hmm. It is not my last name, it's a pet name. Okay. But I use it now because this is what happened. Yeah. Someone took an interview of me. six years back mm-hmm. and she didn't ask me what my last name was but she looked me up on Facebook and she saw that it said Saria Sawaro mm-hmm. so she just used that okay. and since then I thought well, okay why not mm-hmm. um and Sawaro is basically a cactus from Arizona mm-hmm. it's a pet name given to me by my friend Bao okay and he um when he gave it to me I asked him is is it cuz I'm such a prick yeah. and he didn't really negate that. Yeah. Let's get that out there. He didn't say no. Yeah. <laughs> but and he just laughed. With it. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, maybe it's cuz you know, they've got a hard shell but a soft interior. Mm. Mm. Is that I guess yeah. And survives in like really poor conditions. Mm. Something about water as well. Yeah, they have water and so they store water. Yeah, like them. yeah, that's a nerdy fact. Anyway, <laughs> um so for the people unfamiliar with your work, who is Saria Suaro? Okay. Uh so I'm basically a painter. Mm-hmm. Like that's really how I want yeah. to ad- identify myself. Okay. And I'm also a pastry chef, yep. uh animal enthusiast. Yep. Um I work a bit with animals yep. uh whenever I can. Um and I take painting classes as well for kids. I really so enjoy working with essentially kids. a teacher, a painter, uh an entrepreneur, a chef, animal yeah. lover. Yes, chef. <laughs> pretty much um you know a lot of those stuff but i guess what we're talking about in the last unrecorded intro <laughs> yeah. was um your love for animals and how that works as an inspiration for you so uh and you started saying um how you saw so well started drawing dogs at first and that yeah. kind of became a thing for you so okay so basically i um besides my cake store mm-hmm. which is like 
my chef identity and I guess my entrepreneur identity. Um, I identify as a painter and illustrator and a lot of my work features a lot of animals, especially dogs. And we were talking about how or why that happened. Yeah. And that's because um, after I rescued my dog, mm -hmm. Buki, um, I started, basically what happened was I started a project because I wanted to help other stray animals in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got in touch with uh, shelters and clinics and I started my pet project under which I draw other people's pets portraits and yep. in exchange I'd get whatever money I'd get, I'd just give it back to the shelter right. or clinic. Um, so the project ran for four months, and after, on, you know, actually after that we did Catter Day and also Puppyville. Mm -hmm. uh, Catter Day I did with a shelter called LB Puppyville. I did with Abhirano. Puppyville Two yep. happened last year, as you know. Yep. Um, so the whole, besides you know doing what I do, this yep. is really the side of me that I really enjoy because yep. I get to pet a lot of dogs yep. and also talk about this. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things I've noticed, uh, or actually no, like why do I paint dogs? It's because, um, it's not dogs really, it's why I paint stray animals is because yep. I've always had a very difficult sense of home. Mm -hmm. um, so I've all, so every time I think about home, I can only think about my dog. Yep. Uh, I actually have a whole body of work on this, it's called displacement. Okay. Uh, and I see dogs, street dogs, yep. uh, that, that are displaced, yep. and that's why they you know, they, they place, moved yeah. and they're on the streets. I, I see, I identify a lot with that. And I think just really comforting and seeing dogs helps with, say, anxiety, mm, helps with, absolutely. inspires me. Yeah. Um, so I just relate with stray dogs a lot. That's mm. really why I draw a lot of dogs. Right. Um, now, obviously, you're, an, as you mentioned, that you are a painter, um, yes. chef, a chef, a teacher, an entrepreneur, um, all these other things. So my goal with this podcast is to kind of understand why creatives do what why they do what they do pretty much mm -hmm. and for me um, personally i come from a creative background and i want to do a lot of things um sometimes i take too much on and i can't finish it or sometimes Been there. <laughs> yeah and this podcast is a classic example i mean <laughs> I'm here literally for seven days and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll just record. You a got this. <laughs> you got this. You're the first one. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know in the next week. But <laughs> the, the whole point is I try to get all these things and sometimes I get successful and sometimes I fail. Um, so for someone um, who wants to do all these things and have all these passions, um, how do you go about that? And I guess that's the stuff I want to talk about um, with you because given someone who's fairly successful in all these different categories of um thanks their, their that's a paid advertisement <laughs> <laughs> under the table, under the table. Yeah. um bribe me with coffee yeah oh like i'll bribe still, still water yes yeah, yeah. uh, how do you go about that um what, when do you know what to choose and how do you distinguish yourself with the identities that you need for these different categories of work you know that's a really good question i um Fit, no one's asked me that, but mm -hmm. I think that's the most important part of the whole thing. Uh, a lot of the times, I also really struggle with the time, mm -hmm. but I think for me, um, I'm extremely, like I need to be organized um, f to excel, mm -hmm. actually, which is, it's, it's, it sounds very non-creative, but yep. uh, you know, when you, it sounds a little robotic, but I, because I think, because I went to culinary school and I always thought that, you know how you do like mise en place before yeah. you actually cook, it's sort of like that. Yeah. So I try and do time management as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And also I, I've i seen that making a list of checklist to of things I need yeah. to do every day helps me. That yeah. also helps with anxiety if anyone's oh. suffering from that. It's something that I cope with, I have yeah. to cope with. Um, the way I choose projects is through gut feeling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that but um, yeah, like even last year, you know, I joined a uh, booming new company and I was really excited, but I decided to leave in two months after doing all the groundwork because I was just like, actually last year was a huge turn point yeah. for me because last year I did uh, my first residency. Mm -hmm. Also, it was an international residency. Wow. I also did my first international show. Okay. Um, I Fantastic. did. Fantastic. Yeah, in Nepal? Um, in Nepal. And yeah. uh, there was a small showing in Bangkok as oh, well. Oh, fantastic. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so, and uh, I think 
from the beginning of the year, someone had actually told me something very interesting. She, um, I was at an auction. And, um, someone who, you know, is a, a curator told mm-hmm. me that, you know, you're good, but you could be great. Mm. And then I was like, so you're that's right. A, yeah. I mean, why would you not? Why would why would you, why would I just be fine with like good? Yeah. And you know, as a competitive person, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, but I think since then, I was wondering like, how do I how do I pursue how do I immerse myself in just yeah. my in just painting, honestly, because that's what I enjoy the mm-hmm. most. Um, and I couldn't, so I was looking for ways out because I have a business to run. There yeah. are other little projects that I love doing. I love new projects, Absolutely. basically. Same. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> it's the dark circles under our I eyes. I know. <laughs> yeah. But um, so after that, ending uh, like middle of the year, like around October, I signed up with the new company, yeah. and I, and I decided to leave because I really knew after my second residency mm-hmm. that I, all I really wanted to do was just learn uh, more by learn I mean yeah. practice more yeah. you know and that's the area I've always knew known that I'd be an artist I just didn't realize I'd be an artist this late yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah so uh, that's basically how I take projects on yeah. but that doesn't mean I don't take on projects which are outside of art because you know I'll, I still take painting classes for kids and adults yeah. I ta- um, I still do interesting projects like I did one with the Rohingyas last year yep. under the UN um, and then I still do residencies yeah. uh, my cake store still runs because I have a Absolutely. fantastic yeah. team handling it fantastic um, so yeah like time is scarce but also i think the older i get i realize that's the most important resource besides your hands or my hands that i have so um yeah that's so uh, that's the interesting thing that you say about um your i think the florist basically the um the baking company that you have which called the baking the florist yeah it's a baseball cake studio okay in dhaka fantastic so (laughs) um so with the florist the the most important word you said was the team right so um how do you know who to pick and you know because one thing i i really struggle struggle with with is giving something absolutely um i love delegating stuff because it takes stuff off my hands but then why that is that's because you're a perfectionist Mm. and you, there's a there's a better expression for us it's because you're anal anal so it's um we're getting into therapy session now mm. no mm. no because that's me you know i get it like yeah. i'm so anal about things yeah i get it yeah. so it's it's so so how how do you know who to kind of give that stuff and more importantly how do you not get scared that someone else will mess up your passionate well, stuff they will always mess up <laughs> i'm sorry team <laughs> <laughs> Look, the thing, the thing about uh, so a lot, I've, so a lot of people have told me very m- many interesting things. But um, one of them that I understand now is, uh, especially for the flowers, which I, I was really attached to. So I realized that I had to step away from the company for mm-hmm. it to run better Absolutely. because I was hell bent on quality but i was not looking at the other aspects of the business Mm. so when i took a step back i realized i could um run it better but of course with people how do you find the right people i think i don't know if there's a right formula for that um i've tried taking on friends i've tried taking on partners i've uh had you know had employees who Mm -hmm. come in and go but it's fine those were all i don't see them as failures Mm -hmm. i only see them as learning curves you know and right now my team is set they're fantastic um i'm thinking of expanding a little bit but it's all trial and error money i mean there's really no formula formula. yeah enough and do you work uh, nine to five before getting into your own stuff yeah, I so I worked for eight years. Oh wow! Yeah, I worked for eight years because I started working around when I was like seventeen. Okay. So all throughout A level, like school, yeah. high school, and college, I had two to three jobs because I was paying my way through. Mm-hmm. So I think when I was around, so I, the last job that I would the uh, office ish job that mm-hmm. I did was not really nine to five. It was like twenty four hours because it oh. was in advertising. Because I used to work in advertising for a couple oh, of wow. years. Okay. Yeah. Um, soul sucking. Sorry. Soul sucking. No, it was actually very refreshing. Okay, fantastic. Um, I worked as a creative. Oh, okay. Yeah, but There's the only f- yeah, I have a few friends who get into it for the creative side. Yeah, but they get out because it's just so much. You know what they'll do to you? They'll like it's like, it's like um, I've had to write 
27 scripts for the same company and mm. they rejected all of them and I can't do anything about it mm. and then they, they they picked a really poor script and I'm just like this can't have my name on it yeah. there's a problem with advertising you know and like, that's where you're like you know screw you all I'm just gonna do my own thing um well after eight years of working I've, I've actually Finally actually realized. my boss told me that um, it'd be cool if you got a master's and I was like you're right but then um, instead of my master's I just changed my mind and I thought you know I could just study whatever I wanted yeah so I went to culinary school instead. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So and um, so, I guess that's interesting as well. So, when did you realize that you were the creative kind? Were you always like when you were a kid, you would always draw, sing, dance, all that kind of stuff, or was it a certain point while you were growing up, you're like, you know, this has changed my life, and I want to pursue this forever? What was it for you? <coughs> um, that creative spark, I guess. I've always drawn as a kid. My mom, I feel a little bad for her because she tried to teach me things like sing, and I'm yeah. like, nope. And dance, I'm like, nope. And just other things, and I'm like, mother, hear me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do this. But um, I did actually want to pursue painting um, classes, but my uh, parents were not really game for that. Yeah. So then I said, oh, I'll study the second best thing, which is creative writing. Yeah. Um, I didn't do that either because yeah. I was supposed to go to New York to do that. But wow. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. I stayed back here. Uh, and then I just quit school, um, did my thing privately and did that. But how did I, How do you know you're a creative kind? Um, really, because I was just, it just comes naturally to mm. you, you know. But I, it, it's interesting, you know, I, math and physics also came very naturally to me. It's also things that I'm really interested in. Yeah. Wow. Um, so at a point I did consider, like, if I can't study art, maybe I can study yeah. architecture. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. But mm -hmm. I think, I think that's also an avenue that, you know, I, I'm very drawn to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always done, like, I, I think, from starting from class projects to painting classes or whatever. I've always just been more interested in that and I think right. that's just always shown in my work. Everything. Right. It's, it's um, interesting you mentioned architecture because I got into architecture. Really? In my yeah, I did my bachelor's in architecture and then moved away from it. Okay. So I, I was always, again, I guess um, in Bangladesh, obviously you've got this, got this thing where if you know how to draw, you can be an architect. Um, ah, this is no, a very I known know. myth. <laughs> Um, so I was like, oh, you can draw an architect. So I was like, okay, cool. This sounds like a cool thing to do. I can, I've always played with Lego and how bad can it be? Right. It was horrible. <laughs> um, but I still, you know, persevered and did my bachelor's all within the time frame. So you finished your bachelor's in Correct, architecture? Correct, but not master's. In master's, I kind of moved away from it. Um, what so was it, your master's My in? master's was in project management and marketing. So yeah. it's a bit of a detour, but I'll tell you what, architecture helped a lot for me to understand the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because I never had formal training in any creative work, but just the simple fact that when I was to design stuff, the question yeah. was always used to be, why do you do, why did you do this uh, creative certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, and the answer could never be because, oh, it looks good. It, yeah. it was, always, was always, you need to have an explanation that either yeah. inspires you to do what you did, or it was the thinking and the, and the way you would perceive things definitely helped me. So for me, I got that training and then I moved away from it and then I'm like, oh, do I want to go back into it? Because I'm, because yeah. architecture feels like a very experience, ex and well, you get better with experience. Okay. That, that's what but I But you know, like, I don't think you necessarily have to practice architecture, but you can, like, from whatever designs you develop, mm. you can see the, that you have a design process and that's very clear. I'm actually surprised uh, but I mean, I was surprised that you, s you studied marketing because I was just mm. like, I always assumed that you yeah. studied design of some sort. Right. Because you can see it in your work. Mm. And uh, I've always wondered if, um, because I've, I have no training at all right. in painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've always wondered if I had like missed out, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting because um, I, I think it, it helps sometimes but if you want to be a creative and you know you just want to learn mm -hmm. um you can learn the technicalities of it because yeah. when i was doing architecture i wasn't the best student and yeah. the others were so good like the stuff that they would do blow my head off. like what the hell are they like where's that inspiration coming from <laughs> and here i'm thinking oh you know there's, there's no way i could have thought of that um but i use that same technique for my other stuff for like say the videos that i make or a mm -hmm. few other things that i've done and that's where it helps a lot so i think yeah. that the core understanding is definitely something you can perhaps learn but if you want to be an artist per se and you just think just doing a degree would 
would help. I don't think yeah. that's the way to go for creators. Yeah, you know, I've had this. This is a, this is a very interesting topic to talk about because I've had this discussion with um, artists, educators friends you mm. know and um there's really no right way but i also think you know because i again like i studied journalism mm. uh but oh, then wow. yeah, yeah i but then my third year i knew i wouldn't be a journalist because i was just like i'm i'm not interested in being sub- objective at all yeah and also um the problems with what was with ethics or ethical classes yeah. where you'd be like should I, uh, you know, if you see, there was a photojournalism class actually, and then you're seeing someone at, in a war, war site, mm. like as an example, and then you're like, should I go help that person or should I take a photo so that it's unaltered and people know the reality and the truth? And yeah. I think, excuse me, every time I would go and help the yeah. child or whoever. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things um, that I understand stood about myself yeah. um, back in college. Uh, as a... <clears throat> as a chef, I think you know. I, I like. I think as as more time goes, I don't really see myself as a chef. Mm-hmm. I want to see myself so as really as a painter yeah. and an artist, a uh, illustrator. However, yeah. Yeah. whichever ven- avenue of it, basically. Because right. um, you can see that influence on the on the culinary side of things as well, like you know, being an artist, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, de- I, I would hope so. I mean, mm. um, I, it, you know, again, like uh, with practice. Even though I had formal training in culinary school, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, with pra- it took me maybe three years to come to my style of yep. things. And um, all, again, with art, you know, it took me uh, four, th- three to four years to come to my style of things. So actually, yeah. in the middle, in the middle, I didn't pa- paint for ten years. Wow. Um, yeah, since I sat for my tenth grade exams, yeah. um, for ten years I didn't paint, and then. Uh, while I was studying for my 10th grade exam, I had a bit of training yeah. where basically we went, went to um, like our school teacher at her place and we'd like do studies and stuff. Yeah. She's phenomenal. Um, she's uh, so after I got back into art, I mm-hmm. saw that I started I could because I knew all the rules like yeah. you were saying. I knew at least the basic ones of yeah. drawing and sketching. Uh, I started breaking them and yeah. it was just easier. And then it started coming back and all of that. But do I really miss formal training? Not necessarily. Mm. Fair but enough. I mean, I you know, I, I think it's, I, I you know, I think people who, it's a very general statement, but yeah. I think people who like swap degrees mm-hmm. um, are probably, they. I think they know themselves better in many instances. Yeah, I mean, I knew from my first semester that I didn't want to do architecture, mm. uh, pretty much on a straight away. But then when you move to a different country and pay all that money, mm. it's kind of like, okay, I'll do the three years and then I'll yeah. see what I can do. Um, but I guess I still, I think it's a millennial thing as well, where, we, where you have multiple careers, multiple um, it's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go for tangent here. Uh, are, did you have supportive parents? Um, no. Okay. And how did you break out from that, or how did you? How are you here, despite that? Um, I guess um, uh, I where, where because, I'm going, yeah, from yeah, the creative yeah. point of view, if there's a creative who wants to do some stuff and they don't have that environment to support them. Mm. How would they go about it? And want to hear um, a story? Yeah, I think um, you know, I, I I think it was easy for me um, because I started earning at a very young age, and so because I didn't have like a support system at home mm-hmm. uh, necessarily, but like they did couldn't they, they didn't really have much of a say about what I did right. because I wasn't financially dependent on them really. Mm. Um, I mean, they gave me like a bit, but I was like nothing really. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing. And the second thing is um, I have a very strong personality. Mm. And I'm also known in my family as the person who doesn't listen. Okay. In fact, my mother used to tell me <laughs> that I would never get married because I don't listen. Right. <laughs> and then I actually, when I, when I was getting married to my ex, I actually yeah. went and told her, hey, um, I, I know you said that. But also, he also doesn't listen. But I mean, it did work for 16 years. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. That's, you know, it's, you do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's cool. Like, mm. it did work. Yeah. Technically. It yeah. did work for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, th- uh, I think for people who, I think a lot of people struggle with families not supporting creative careers because mm-hmm. they just don't understand or they don't see the how, value. Yeah, the value yeah. or if it will be viable. Um, I think. 
I think you just have to let it. You have to shrug it off. You have to grow a really thick skin. Mm. You ha- you ha- you like have a saguaro. To, yeah, and you have to like that's you have to treat it as white noise. You know, mm. everything else is white noise. It's just work. Including the crow that's really has its input right now. Yeah. About this whole topic. Yeah. Um, so basically, thick skin and trying to get out um, and do your own thing. But it, I guess for a lot of the creatives that, especially in, in Bangladesh, that's. Yeah. That's a very difficult thing to do when you have to go outside that. Of course. I mean, I realize I'm an anomaly. Mm. I, mean, I mean, how many people just live on their own here? Especially yeah. women. It's hard. People make it hard, you know. Mm. But... Um, just got to do it. You, I think... Someone once asked me, how much do you want it? Mm. It was about something different. Uh, and then... And so it's, it's really just that you have to ask yourself, how much do I want it? Yeah. And if, if you want it, you will break everything right. to do it um relation it could be like relationships with parents mm. uh could be dropping out of school you gotta do what you gotta do but mm. one thing you uh, you have to always m- know is discipline yeah uh, and i think I, th- I think i really have that especially Fantastic. when it comes to being a chef yeah uh for being a painter i mean there are measures that i put on myself mm-hmm. just so i can operate because you know I've gone through these phases where I'm just like, oh, I'm a painter. I will just paint. And then I have like three months. I've like done nothing. And yeah. then I can go like, oh, it's because, you know, I have a mental block. Mm-hmm. But the mental block does not bring me money. That's also something to yeah. really, that's a very important topic, especially in Bangladesh. Like, how do you make money as a creative individual yeah. if you're not working for a firm? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think um, you have to really understand how much do you want it. Yeah. Um, one thing you mentioned um, I guess in the last answer was how being a woman in this um, situation obviously has has its challenges. Challenges. Yeah. So going into it, that aspect more, like what's it like being a woman and doing stuff for yourself, building yourself up as a personality, not only in this country, I guess, but in in general. What are some of the obstacles that you face, um, and, and how do you overcome <clears throat> them? Pretty much. Yeah. Got it. Um, I think. Okay. So. Because I both my both I would say I would identify as two professions like painter and pastry chef. So both my professions are very offbeat. So I think um, a lot of times people ask me things like, "How do you make money?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> or they'll ask me things like, "How do you live? How do you pay your bills?" Same thing really. Um, and I've had you know you, we talk about obstacles. I've had. When I was leaving advertising, mm-hmm. I've had my boss that I was really close to tell me, you are go- going to leave a career to pursue to be a maid. Because mm-hmm. I said I'm going to culinary school. Yeah. She said it as a joke, but that's that's really how and it is. It's a she. It's a she, right? And that's really how it is. And that's always really st- stuck with me. Mm. Um, last year, I did an interview where um, I made a joke. And I, I really stand by it. Um, and I think well, people who got it laughed. I said, you know, if you're going to say that a woman's place is in the kitchen, then I might as well make some money out of it, which I do. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the challenges, like I'll tell you one challenge. Um, when I moved in uh, as a woman living by herself, mm-hmm. um, um, one of my neighbors actually went to the police and complained wow. about me. Because he was like, there's a woman who stays in this apartment with a foreign dog, which is a lie because my dog is a rescue and she's mm. a local breed. Mm. Really, that's what's offending me. Mm. <laughs> you know the I mean? most, yeah. The most. You can tell anything but, about me, but not about my dog. Yeah, yeah. like, don't have my dog. Yeah. Um, you know, little things like that. Uh, I, I've had to deal with things like that. I've had to deal with... Uh, oh, another thing I think is very, mm. very mentioned were the two things. Sorry, that yeah. was my... Okay. Like, um, one is I've been, I've been called out a lot of times as a entrepreneur mm-hmm. um, saying that I have a resting bitch face mm-hmm. and I'm like there's a reason for my RBF yeah. I didn't even realize I had it until yeah. people started saying, saying it, you yeah. don't s- smile too much I'm yeah. like are you saying something funny I mean I don't understand <laughs> this is a meeting no so uh, really small things like that as a woman I think the RBF you have to embrace a little bit more because mm. um, I'll tell you the w- one anecdote yeah. Yeah. One, one is um I, the last company I was working at, the I was chief of production. Mm-hmm. So when I was with my staff and I, we were talking, and I remember we were prepping a really beautiful uh, lunch menu, and I told them what the menu was. And one of the sous chefs, he said, 
uh, oh, we have to make rotis. All right, we'll have to get like a maid to do it. Because I'm like, why do we need a maid to do it? There's a hu- capable team right here. We are able to mm. produce whatever we want. And he said, no, that's a girl's job. And I'm like, I'm a girl. And then, you know, he looked at me and he laughed. And I, I know what he meant. It's yeah. because, you know. You're not. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, no. it's because, you know, he, he, I, I understand where he came from. But yeah. also he didn't identify me as a girl because he sees me as his boss. Correct. Um, and the reason he sees me as his boss is because also a running joke in my last office was yeah. I would walk in and go like, you, you guys just want me to be like mean. Yeah. I mean, or else you're not going to follow yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. If I tell them nicely, they won't really listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then, I mean, it's all in like good fun, yeah. really. But still, like, I think for women, especially in this area, mm. um, like in these parts of the world, really, I think if you are want, want to be a boss, yeah. you need that resting bitch face yeah. and you have to embrace it. Um, biggest failure so far? Oh, so many. <laughs> okay, so that, that one big one. And what have you learned from it? <clears throat> if anything, does it mm. have to be your learning either? My learning was that I shouldn't work with my friends. Fantastic. Yeah, I think um, I think because I've always uh, realized that I'm very difficult to work with, but I think you might be too <laughs> because I th- it's a problem that perfectionists have. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I think that my biggest learning is I'm, I don't want to work with a friend ever again. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, as a creative, you get into. Uh, the thing called the creative block right so mm. a creative rut sometimes you just lack inspiration you don't yeah. want to do um and one thing you mentioned earlier as well was having discipline and stuff so first of all do the two are the two connected and if not like what do you do to get that creative rush mm. coming back again yeah um unfortunately something very mundane um i realized that i go through creative blocks myself the only thing is you just have to keep on practicing. Mm. Um, they could be poor, bad, whatever, but I think if you, it, it's fine actually to take a break sometimes, but you could be drawing, like say you could even be drawing like just normal hand sketches or yeah. whatever. It could be an illustrator, just doing like little, little things. Mm. Only because, um, not that you would forget, but also I've seen that when I take a break and I am not painting for a while or yeah. am not involved with that, I. I find this worry, like this fear in me where I'm just like, will I be able to, you know, be at the same skill level because I've had like a couple of months of break. But, you know, what's interesting is kind of like riding a bicycle. You Mm, don't really forget forget it. it. It's creative muscle that's always there. Yeah, and it'll it'll always come back Mm. to you. And, you know, another thing I think is really important to notice, and I tell all my students that, that, um, you know, painting... Or creating is really uh, the skill is half of it mm. the other way the other thing is how you see things and learning to see things yeah. and that just that means you know like watching it could be if you're painting like i can only talk about that uh, watching yeah. how you know light shadow uh, angles dimensions bone structure mm-hmm. like really learning to go beneath the, you know what you yeah. see and yeah. then really pinpointing that um, and also, it takes a lot of studying. Mm. You know, surprisingly, you uh, that's and there are so many great art podcasts that yeah. you could log into and just okay. really hear. Yeah, okay. that was an advice given to me by my friend Alia, and I think it really helps. Okay, yeah. just use them as inspiration as a constant. No, just like when you well, say you could be working, you could be listening to that. Right. Um, just it's just like keeping it. Yeah, yeah uh, because thinking. I think, you know, there are little things that I pick up, like, say, for discipline, I picked it up from... So I, I treat my Instagram as ins- inspiration. Right. So when I go in there, I, you know, I just I just want to see things. Yeah. Um, so one of the artists that I really like, she uh, she was talking... She made this little video and she said that, you know, why don't you guys do this? Like, put, like, 45 minutes of bursts. Mm-hmm. Even if you're having one of those artist blocks, yeah, yeah. just paint in that. And after 25 minutes, you will have a break. So you know right. you can give yourself a little treat. Yeah, you know, you yeah. can, and my treat is usually coffee. Okay. You know? Or, or it's the other way around. Usually yeah. for others. Yeah, Have yeah, coffee yeah. and then do the work. The second cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, Are you speaking my language? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's... Um, you can, putting little... 
you know, the, the whole thing is putting little challenges on yourself. That's mm. the only way you get better. It's no use competing with someone else. You're mm. just competing with yourself. Right. So, yeah, I put like little mental exercises, blocks on myself. Do you have any routine that you follow generally for just, I guess, or just being disciplined in other aspects of life that helps you be more creative other than this 45 minute thing that you do? Honestly, it's waking up early. I okay. think that's my thing. I usually wake up at five or six. Wow. Yeah. Do you have creative moments? So like for me, for example, I think my best times are at night. Do you so have a creative process or like by that? I mean, I'll give you a small example. Like my best ideas come mm-hmm. to me when I do a particular thing. Mm. And this thing I started doing when I was 12 or 13. Okay. I would put on my headphones we had Walkmans then. I yeah. put my walk, or actually, we had CD players. Okay. So like a little. The, what was the round thing called? That's the, the, the CD Walkman. player. The, the, the Discman. The Discman. Discman. Yeah, yeah, I had that, and then I'd put that on, blast music on yeah. full volume, mm-hmm. turn off the lights, have the fan on like full, full volume, and then I would walk around and listen to music. Mm. And I've always, and I still do that. Okay. Um, in fact, when I was moving in with my ex, I told him, by the way, there's a weird thing that I do right. that I think you should know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't stay in the room. <laughs> you know? Makes sense. But that's given me my best ideas. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I found out later that in many, like there's a, there, I forget the right uh, word for it, but in, in other, I wouldn't say religions, but in philosophy and creative process or people who write about these things, there mm-hmm. are certain names they give this a gift to this you know where you're it's basically like a birthing process yeah, yeah. you know so do you have something like that for me the creative process is at first i'll have an itch right mm. and it'll I'll, that itch will keep growing and growing for months until i decide to scratch it but how do you scratch it do you write about so it? i constantly think about it, it kind oh. of overtakes my thinking process yeah. and i think about it you know, on the daily, when I'm on the bus, when I'm doing stuff, when I'm having dinner, I'll just zone out and think about it. And then I'll start taking an action. So this podcast was one of one of that things um, as well. Um, but generally nothing that gives me immediate kind of, um, I guess, return of, of having the process. Hmm. Um, and also the long term movement of trying to do things just if i want to do something right now like okay i've got like say 45 minutes to do something Mm. i could do something but not something that i perhaps need to get out there for for example so i would struggle with that um sometimes that comes to me rather than me reaching out for it yeah and perhaps you train that muscle by doing what you do maybe for 45 minutes every day i have to kind of focus and train that perhaps no i think the 45 minute sprint that i do um it doesn't have to be 45 minutes but yeah, anything yeah. that you kind of do yeah, yeah. every day to help you kind of train so that you can reach out to that creative bank when you need to it's more like say i don't know if it's like really muscle training because you know like i i would say like 90 percent of what you create as a, an artist mm. or a, whatever like mm. an artistic ugh, person is um garbage okay 10 percent is good correct um but but you know it could be like levels of garbage mm. you know and you only you would know yeah, yeah, yeah you know like i finished a painting where yeah. i was not happy with it mm. you know but like, people loved it yeah, you know yeah. i'm just like Tough, that sucked yeah. you know what i mean so like little things like that um do you do stuff for yourself always and do you do stuff for the people barely okay barely i mean, do yeah. you think an artist should depends like i have no judgment really i don't okay. really care it's just, i I'm, I'm extremely selfish in that yeah. aspect i'm just like what do i want to do mm. but have i done stuff for money yeah i mean i worked in advertising yeah. really <laughs> <laughs> like, last person to judge mm, <laughs> yeah but um i've learned a lot yeah. while working on other people's projects and i used to look down on people before who would do it but i i, don't I think anymore. it comes with um experience absolutely and, and i think age wisdom mm-hmm. um, and really understanding the merit of money <laughs> and that it's uh because i remember i used to like judge everyone left right and center <laughs> when i was a teenager and it was like you know you make shit music or you make, it's like you know you, you're on the top five chart of the list and then i remember um watching this talk by john merritt berkeley called mm-hmm. music and he said something like you know just being like pop music just basically means popular music mm-hmm. like Jimi hendrix was a was a pop artist um sure. elvis presley was a pop artist in that yeah. essence because they were popular the beatles were pop artists I mean, yeah quite literally but 
um, that doesn't negate the quality of the work or the credibility just because they're more popular. And that kind of ch- changed true. or helped. I've also had that phase where I'm yeah. like, oh, you watch these movies? Yeah, like, exactly. why don't you watch foreign movies? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, th- th- there's movies? that, I guess, elitist um, mentality that, that, that I still have parts of it, but I try to judge between subjective and objective ways of, of I guess, understanding art at the mm. end of the day. Uh, but I guess that's a whole separate topic. Uh, Definitely. Um, go on and on and on <laughs> about that. Um, no, we're here to talk about um, how you can do a lot of things, but with only like 24 hours per day. Absolutely. So I guess going back to the discipline side of things, you said time management has helped you a yeah. lot. Is there anything you do in particular to plan your day, to um, like like plan your months ahead of time? How, Google how do you Calendar. Go about oh my God. Okay. So I just book out everything, block out everything. Oh, God. You mm. see my calendar is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I want to I take a peek at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my, it's basically my Google calendar, mm-hmm. but I also use my notes constantly on my phone. Okay. Uh, I've noticed uh, what something we were talking about off air, mm-hmm. uh, anxiety. Mm. I've noticed that it really helps with my anxiety okay. if I have little checklists every day or at right. least weekly. Do you get anxiety usually? I do, actually. Um, something that I... Work induced? Work induced, yeah, mostly. Um, it's but uh, the only good thing is I'm so busy with work that I usually don't have too much time to deal with it. Mm-hmm. It's not really a good thing in the long term, but that's okay. But I, I've I've come up with like little little uh, little solutions yeah. for anxiety, and one of them is being around my dog. Mm-hmm. That helps. Uh, definitely the checklists, and uh, in case of panic attacks or anxiety attacks, I one of the things I actually googled while I was having a panic attack. Wow. I had to Google because I was on yeah. my own, yeah. and they said call a loved one. So that's something you might might want to try as well mm. if you ever have one later. Yeah. yeah. Um, or go to WebMD and see you have all the different diseases that you can possibly get. Maybe not do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyone you particularly look up to right now, creatively or non-creatively? Ah, uh, so many people. Wow, so many artists globally um, that I really genuinely love. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's interesting because most of them are like graffiti artists okay. or like or muralists right now. Really, they're not graffiti artists. Uh, but I think in Taka, I really look up to Rubaya uh, from Operano. Okay. She's my personal hero who is promoting, um, you know, vegan health and lifestyle. She is the owner, uh, she's the founder of Abherano and, mm. and the founder of Bangu Vegan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do Puppyville with her every year. And, you know, I, if, if you ask me, how do I see myself spending my time 10 years down the line? It's really working a lot more with a dog shelter. Or I smile because that's a question later. Oh. What's your goal in five years? Not ten. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't really have... A, I, I don't like setting goals that way because my life... I've had so many career changes. Um, that's exactly why I ask. Yeah, so mm. I, I like knowing that it's just free-flowing. Okay. But, um, you know, if you had to ask me, like, currently, what are you working on? I'm working on my solo. I'm working Is on... That? Uh, the cake store, mm. which runs really mm. in the background. I'm working on residencies and um, also working on like group exhibits. Mm. And there's so much work happening through these. Mm. But I love doing like, you know, working with animal shelters yeah. in general. So I, I'm working, hopefully we'll do Puppyville every year mm. this time. It's interesting because you say in five years, um, you're happy to kind of let it free flow. Mm. Um, I do that too, but that actually causes the anxiety. <laughs> It's like, oh, what am I going to be in five years kind of thing? Because mm. if I don't have it planned out. But then again, if I have it planned out, I feel I'm just too stuck. So it's, I guess, a lot of internal battle that uh, I guess creatives have to have to go through. Um, yeah, definitely. Because I think one of the biggest struggles uh, being a creative, uh, especially in Bangladesh, is mm. how do I actually really make money? Mm. Um, but also, you know, <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to step away from making some really good money doing something that I enjoy which is being a chef Mm -hmm. but i actually walked out from that because i yeah certain that you know i like it Mm -hmm. i don't like it the most right so i made that choice but um yeah i mean even even 10 years actually no like i i knew that i would have a dog shelter yeah at some point in my life like um later stage of my life Mm -hmm. when in back in 2010 2010 that's when i knew right but also in 2010 someone's uh 
I think in passing, someone mentioned, actually the person who gave me the nickname Sawaro, yeah, yeah. he's the one who uh, mentioned about the dog pound, I uh, mean, the dog shelter, yep. uh, because we were in India traveling, and he just ma- mentioned it, like maybe you could have a dog shelter at oh. some point. And then it That's the itch, start of the itch. That was the itch, <laughs> but you know, the itch really grew after mm-hmm. like 10 years or something. Like <laughs> Not 10 years, like five years. But yeah. Um, he's also the one who told me that maybe you should be a chef. Okay, wow. Yeah. It sounds like, um, you know, a sage you have to visit. Definitely. Oh. Um, we're kind of towards the end of the, of the show, so I guess I'll end up with a few things. So where do you think the future of the creative industry is going? I guess in, in Bangladesh and, and globally. Um, so See, Bangladesh is booming right now. Mm, I think there are absolutely. so many really interesting people doing really interesting projects here. Um, I, I really see the scope of it uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> in terms of pastry, uh, yeah. you know, restaurants, yeah. I think really there's a huge shift that's happening right now into just operating uh, like online mm-hmm. or as a cloud and then sending uh, over food uh, as opposed to like having restaurants and like serving right. people like that. And that's the model that my store follows still. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, you know, with time, that that's is, going to be that, the... Yeah, that's going to be the survivor. Mm. Unless it's like, I mean, I don't negate restaurants at all. I love yeah, going to restaurants. You still need that social communal side of definitely, things. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And but it's also uh, serving that other side. Yeah. yeah, but also there's a little, um, you can see like a little spark in like... Uh, so there is something called supper clubs mm-hmm. that's something that i also run okay. so like once a month we'll have like a dinner and people can pre-book and come in and uh yeah it's actually really that's fun yeah. Not about that cool um so finally i guess you know this podcast for the creatives mm. um anybody who wants to walk your path or is brave enough to walk in your path um what are three actionable steps so not just i guess what i'll try to steer away from is you know follow your passion and all that kind of stuff but I guess three or maybe one big actionable step that they can take right now to be able to get to where you are maybe five, 10, 15 years down the line. Um, I can only like say if I, I, I see that question more like how, if, if 10 years ago, if you knew that you would be here, what would you have done? Mm-hmm. I think or I've done better really. Okay. I think what I would have done is um, really understood what I really wanted mm-hmm. and then just not necessarily went go to school for it, but yeah. like really train myself, like have better training. Okay. Um, so I think for anyone who wants to do something right now, train yourself. So basically get better at what they do in terms Whatever. of skill set and understanding yeah, yeah. of the market. So yeah. yeah. And um, when I say get better, oh, and I just, I don't mean just practice or whatever. Yeah, I also yeah. mean like actually, actually read understand. on it, yeah, actually yeah. read and like get into it because you'll just get better. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second thing is, uh, also ask yourself is this viable like Mm -hmm. as a career like in terms of money because you have to sustain yourself so (coughs) excuse me um you know you find a way of making money through it or else you'll have to drop it later on Mm -hmm. and that's something that i've had to do in many instances and then come back to it you know i've always had to take detours and come back so it's better to have a better game plan um and the third field third one probably would be I think learn to market yourself better. Right. So it's everything. Important skill. That's the only thing that'll that's get you forward so here. So important. Yeah. Like regardless of anywhere, industry. to be honest. Yeah. Anywhere. It's, yeah. Um, the skill and the uh, the difference is, you know, like 20, 30 years back, yeah. like your audience is like this much, like yeah. in your city, in your country. Now right. it's like global. Exactly. So you have to you have to adapt mm. and start going there. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. No, it, was, it, was it was fun. It was fun. It was a pleasure. It's like a sweat fest. I like it. It was a sweat fest. <laughs> we'll turn the fans on. And that's more exciting than actually launching this uh, podcast. So <laughs> don't judge. But uh, that's where we are. So thanks again. Um, we'll, I guess, do this again at some point. Yeah. And fun. learn more. Hopefully, by that time, you'll, you would have gone somewhere else. Mm, or done maybe. more stuff. And maybe. I would have... <laughs> so would know. you so would you yeah. yeah you'd probably not do a podcast, podcast but like no. a series of podcasts I know. <laughs> thank you <Sorry. laughs> thank